38 Two Witnesses of Daniel's 70th Week Like many subjects in the Bible, the identity of the two witnesses of Daniel's 70th week has become a controversial and divisive issue amongst some good Bible, believing men and women. While this matter should not cause contentious debate, it has because long, held beliefs even when wrong are hard to change. It is important to properly identify the identity of these two men to properly understand the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. To present a biblical perspective on the identities of these future witnesses, the focus has been narrowed to the two most common pairings, 1, Enoch and Elijah and, 2, Moses and Elijah. Most Bible students agree that one of the witnesses will be Elijah, but not everyone agrees concerning the identity of the second, whether Enoch or Moses. Those who choose Enoch over Moses believe they have scriptural support, but upon closer examination, their logic crumbles. The main reason some have chosen Enoch and Elijah is because of a truth found in Hebrews, it is appointed unto man once to die, Hebrews 9, 27. The idea is that Enoch and Elijah never died so they must be the two witnesses who die in the future, having not died in the past. While there are plenty of people in scripture who certainly died without the scripture ever identifying the time, place, or circumstances of their death, the Bible points to these two men as clearly having never died. Enoch, Genesis 5, 24 And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Hebrews 11, 5 By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him, for before his translation he had this testimony, that he pleased God. Elijah, 2 Kings 2, 11 And it came to pass, as they still went on, and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Enoch and Elijah are not the only two in scripture declared to have bypassed the appointment with death, or are promised to do so in the future. For instance, consider the church's rapture. Paul stated, We shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed, 1 Corinthians 15, 51. He further clarified that expression in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17 where he wrote, We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. The saints still living when Christ returns for the church will bypass death experiencing only a translation. From a mortal body to an eternal state, from one world to the next. So, if the rule is that everyone must die once, there could be millions more exceptions making this rule void. Another type of proof text used would be the prophecy of Enoch associating him to the end, times. The book of Jude reveals that Enoch prophesied, saying, Behold the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints, Jude 1, 14. This type of evidence is insufficient to convince any true Bible student that Enoch is one of the two witnesses. There are many prophecies concerning the end, times and none of these other prophets are one of the two witnesses. Ultimately, Enoch's translation served a much greater purpose concerning the Bible's propensity for pictures and types. Enoch's translation occurred prior to the worldwide flood allowing the church age saints to recognize this glorious picture of the rapture prior to the commencement of Daniel's 70th week. At that time, as in Enoch's day, God will pour out his wrath upon earth's disobedient inhabitants. If bypassing death is the only qualification necessary to be one of the two witnesses, every believer alive at Christ's appearing qualifies. At best, the case for Enoch is weak and indefensible. However, there are two other men that found a unique bond at the Mount of Transfiguration and became figureheads for the entire Old Testament witness. Obviously, these two men were Moses and Elijah, also known in the New Testament as Elias, and it is quite astounding to see how these two men fit the description of the two witnesses present in the latter half of Daniel's 70th week. Consider the following truths and how they serve as evidence to identify one or both men as these future witnesses. The body of Moses Have you ever considered the importance placed upon the body of Moses by God and by Satan? 
Jude informs us that Michael the Archangel contended with the devil and disputed about the body of Moses, Jude 1, 9. Why would the body of Moses be so important that God mentioned such a thing in scripture 1,500 years after Moses died? The fact that there was a controversy over Moses' body would certainly explain why Deuteronomy 34, 6 indicates that he the Lord buried him Moses in a valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth, Peor, but no man know it of his sepulchre unto this day. This is the only instance of this type of phenomenon in scripture. Moses' body was buried by God and protected by Michael the Archangel. Elijah's body was taken into heaven and thus naturally protected from Satan. Evidently, the body of Moses could become significant in the future, especially if he returns bodily to this earth. The promised messenger the Lord promised a voice or messenger would precede the coming king and would serve to announce that coming as far back as Isaiah 40, 1-11. In the New Testament, Three of the Gospels referenced that prophecy and indicated that John the Baptist was the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight, Matthew 3, 1-3, Luke 3, 1-6, John 1, 15-23. Matthew 3, 1 In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, 2 and saying, Repent yet, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 3 For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Esaias, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Interestingly, Mark's gospel tied the prophecy to more than one of the prophets, referring to Isaiah and Malachi as the prophets. This important element uniquely tied together the ministries of John the Baptist and that of Elijah. Mark 1, 1 The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ the Son of God, too as it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. 3 The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. In Malachi 3, 1, the prophesied messenger would prepare the way of the Lord. That messenger was identified, not as John the Baptist, but as Elijah who would come before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, Malachi 4, 5. When John the Baptist entered the scene, he was said to go before him Christ in the spirit and power of Elias Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord, Luke 1, 17. In fact, at one point, Jesus even said, If ye will receive it. This John the Baptist is Elias, which was for to come, Matthew 11, 14. Yet, John was asked, Art thou Elias? To which he responded, I am not, John 1, 21. While this may seem to complicate matters for those unfamiliar with the prophecy, it appears that John the Baptist could have served the role of Elijah if the people received him. Jesus said as much, Elias is come already and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist, Matthew 17, 12-13. Just prior to these words, Christ said, Elias truly shall first come, and restore all things, Matthew 17, 11. Thus, John could have been the prophesied Elijah to come, yet Israel's rejection postponed the coming of Elijah into the future. This also clarifies why the onlookers at the cross understood that Jesus was calling for Elijah, Mark 15, 35-36. Elijah truly will show up again as one of the two witnesses in Daniel's 70th week before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, Malachi 4, 5, and will fulfill Malachi 4, 6. Coincidentally, the previous verse to that prophecy reminded the Jews to remember ye the law of Moses my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments, Malachi 4, 4. Malachi 4, 3 includes the phrase in that day. This day refers to the day of the Lord and Malachi chapter 4 ends with a curse, verse 6. In verses 4 and 5, God mentions Moses and Elijah. 
He says more specifically that he will send Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Malachi 4, 4 Remember ye the law of Moses my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. 5 Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, 6 And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. The Mount of Transfiguration One of the most fascinating events during the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ took place at the Mount of Transfiguration. This event previewed the glorified Christ and his coming kingdom. Interestingly, it was not just the Lord who appeared to Peter, James, and John at the Mount. Two Old Testament saints accompanied the glorified Lord. These two saints were identified as Moses and Elijah, Matthew 17, 1-3. At this event, these two witnessed Christ's kingdom prior to his return to this earth in Revelation chapter 19. Matthew 17, 1 And after six days Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, to and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as the light. 3 And, behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. In the latter half of Daniel's seventieth week, the two witnesses will preach the message of Christ's coming kingdom. The significance does not stop there as every detail was by divine design. Moses represented those who have died but will be raised to enter Christ's kingdom. Elijah represented those who will be ushered into the kingdom without having died. Peter, James, and John represented the Jews who will enter the kingdom still in their fleshly bodies. Yet, the significance of this event goes even deeper. Additionally, Moses represented the law and Elijah represented the prophets. The law and the prophets span the entire Old Testament. For example, when the Lord refused to heed the rich man's plea in hell to send someone to reach his five brothers, Christ stated that if the living hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead, Luke 16, 31. During Daniel's 70th week, earth's inhabitants will literally have Moses and the prophets in the persons of Moses and Elijah. This transfiguration gave a foretaste of the future and further solidified the identities of the two witnesses. Moses and Elijah will prepare the way for Christ and his coming kingdom. The characteristics of the witnesses Revelation chapter 11 records the ministry of the two witnesses who are the two anointed ones. Revelation refers to the two olive trees who are the two anointed ones. Revelation 11, for these are the two olive trees, and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Zechariah 4, 3 and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. 14 Then said he, These are the two anointed ones, that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Zechariah says these figurative olive trees, or branches, are the two anointed ones, that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Elijah and Moses are both referred as having stood with the Lord. Elijah, 1 Kings 17, 1 quotes Elijah as saying, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand. Moses. Exodus 34, 5 And the Lord descended in the cloud, and stood with him there, although this connection may seem less significant, the actions of Moses and Elijah as the two witnesses pinpoint the parallels from the past and point to the future. According to Revelation 11, 5, fire will proceed out of the mouths of the two witnesses to devour their enemies. Revelation 11, 5 And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies, and if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Both Moses and Elijah are two Old Testament examples of God's allowing fire to consume their enemies. Moses, Numbers 16, 31-35 tells about the earth opening to swallow up the followers of Korah and the fire that came down from the Lord and consumed the two hundred and fifty that offered incense. Elijah, 2 Kings 1 9 to 13 tells of the fire that Elijah called down from heaven to consume his enemies. These parallels are not mere coincidence. 
God wants man to know that he can choose to continue a man's ministry even after death. Furthermore, Revelation 11, 6 details that the witnesses will have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, 40, 2 months or 3 and 1, half years. Revelation 11, 6 These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues, as often as they will. Elijah, 1 Kings 17, 1 says that Elijah prayed to stop the rain, and that it would not rain except according to his word. James 5, 17 says that it did not rain for the space of three years and six months during that time. This span of time equals exactly one half of the tribulation period. Additionally, the verse in Revelation states that the two witnesses have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with plagues. Sound familiar? Moses, in Exodus, Moses used the rod of God to turn the waters of Egypt into blood, Exodus 7, 19-20. He also had power to initiate other plagues like the frogs, lice, flies, murin, boils, hail fire, locusts, darkness, and death of the firstborn. The two witnesses have power over waters to turn them into blood and to smite the earth with plagues. To simplify the connections, consider the table below. Characteristic Moses Elijah power to devour enemies by fire, Revelation 11, 5, Numbers 16, 31 to 35, 2 Kings 1, 9 to 13, power to shut heaven that it rain not, Revelation 11, 6, 1 Kings 17, 1, James 5, 17. Power to turn water into blood, Revelation 11, 6, Exodus 7. 19 to 20 power to smite earth with plagues, Revelation 11, 6, Exodus 9, 13 to 15 both are called prophets, Revelation 11, 10, Deuteronomy 34, 10 1 Kings 18, 22, 36 Revelation 11, 11 and after three days and a an half the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. 12 And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them.